Nisha Amilit, Indian Olympian for Decathlon India. In today's video, we're going to learn something very important. How do you kick and move forward? You've learned how to float, but after a point, your legs start slowly going down. So in order for there to be forward movement, you need to start moving your legs. How do you kick? Let me show you. Earlier, they used to say, keep your entire leg stiff and move your leg up and down. That won't really help you move forward. This is what you need to do. If you notice, I'm going to bend my knee very slightly just so that my ankle comes out of the water and I kick gently downwards. Let me show you that again. I'm only getting my ankle out of the water. If you had to bring this much of your leg out of the water, you would actually stay in one place or move backwards instead of forwards. Very important to also keep your ankle nice and floppy. Every time you slap the water, that's when you get that forward push to move forward. I'm going to show you quickly on the wall how to kick. Very important to make sure there is an alternate leg action. Both legs don't kick at the same time. So I'm going to go to this beat. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Remember to always follow the progression. A deep breath in through the mouth. Start exhaling. Hold the wall to float. You notice there was quite a lot of splashing when I'm kicking. That's good. If you're kicking the same with the same effort and kicking under the water, you actually won't get as much movement as you would like. Now that you're confidently kicking with holding the ball, we'll move to the next progression. We're going to use a kickboard. A kickboard is one of the most important pieces of equipment because it gives you that stability, but also challenges you to push a little bit more. It is still resistance in the water. And kickboards are not just for beginner swimmers, it goes all the way up to competitive level swimmers. I'm going to place one hand on either side of the kickboard and because I want my face submerged, I'm going to hold my elbows out and my hands straight in front of me. Take a deep breath. Exhale. Now that you've mastered how to float and kick with the kickboard, you can try and challenge yourself. And now we're going to put my fingers into the little holes in the kickboard. Elbows on the kickboard. What it does now is because my body is no longer flat and my head is up while I'm kicking, it challenges me, pushes me to kick a little bit harder because my body is no longer streamlined in the water. It's a great way to burn calories and it's also one of the best ways to improve your endurance in the water. A great tip to know whether you're doing this right is if you can actually hear your kick while you're kicking. This is the best form of getting kids involved in swimming because they can hold a kickboard, kick and chat with their friends. Now that you've learned with the kickboard and you're quite stable and confident of your kick, we'll try it without the board. Remember at the end, when you're finishing, recovering to a stable standing position. Take a deep breath into your mouth, ensure your chin is touching your neck and when you're moving forward, keep nice, loose, relaxed, floppy ankles with a slight bend in the knee. Now that you've learned how to kick, just keep swimming.